Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of New Replicant. I'm your host, Suicide. And right now, we're going to be continuing uh, where we left off on our progress. And um, I can't remember the last time I played it. It's been a couple of days, so I have to go step in here and refresh my mind to see what we got to do. All right. So the last time I remember... We fought, fought Kanye's shade. We stored another shade, the wolf shade, from across the desert. And now we're back here at the junkie. Oh, that's right. We avenged the brother's uh, death here. Okay. But, um, yeah. So, let's see. Let's see where we go. I think we got to go to the forest of myth. I think, but let's go ahead and check this out. Popola said we might be able to find something in the forest of Yep, myth. there we go. You will forgive me if I seem less than enthusiastic about such a trick. Alright, so that's the last destination for the forest of myth. The other one, I, I, I think there's one more of the uh, key fragment that we need to collect, but I don't know where that is though, so we'll see how that goes. All right. Let's continue. Let's go down here. Oh yeah. He shades has armor now. There we go. Best souls. Physical strength at 20%. Wow, okay. That is much improvement. That. What's this over here? Lose tail. More medicine herbs. Alright. Force and myth. Oh, great. You're next to you. Uh, uh. Uh. Is he stuck on the wall? What the hell? Oh, yeah, that is completely unfair. Yeah. Unfair. Look at that. Bullshit. Oh, increased attack power for what? Okay. Let's see. Let's try to look at the words edit. Uh, all. See, you can actually empty cost negative 20. Okay, thank you. Dark wall, thank you. Attack power is 20%, experience rate 12%. Okay, good. So, force myth. So, we need to get the boar. Let's go ahead and go. Oh, wait. The. Oh, we, we never got to have a chance to clear the. Uh, this boss over here. I, I don't think we did. So, let's go ahead and check this out. Yeah, we never did. I've never seen a shade this large around here. Be careful. This is a formidable foe. All right, focus the ads. Let's try to get this guy underneath. Oh god, I'm a little afraid about this one. Oh fuck, hell. I'm barely doing harm to it. Hold up. 
go and dodge attacks, dodge attack. There you go. Oh, cunning scout. Yeah, that, that would definitely fuck you up. So it's, it might take a little time, guys. I'm sorry, but I gotta be really careful on this shit. Watch out for that. Light attack me, range attacks. Watch out. No! Let's see, we got to charge it up. There we go. Almost there. Almost there. Yeah, there we go. Physical defense at 8%. Alright. One-handed sword, Labyrinth's Whisper. Great. Stupid trash getting in our way. Nice. It's hard Let's to imagine a shade moving. being here. It's uh, almost where like is it my was ball? waiting for us. Back there. It can't be I that know. intelligent. Oh, really, now? Can you truly say so with all confidence? The tactics of the shades grow more intricate with each passing year. It would not surprise me to see them setting oh, elaborate traps <laughs> for us before long. We'd better wipe them out before they get too smart. In any case, we won't be able to live in peace until we take out the Shadow Lord. True. Alright. Horse Myth, here we go. Sorry for the delay, but we gotta get that out of the way. Blasted dream. Oh yeah. yeah. The born episode that we made. I hope never to experience again. <laughs> again. I hear you. Okay, there's some good stuff over here. 
Spirit Capsule, Zap. Hey, the mayor. Oh, hello. How are things? Well, I have been feeling a rather strange presence whenever I visit the Divine Tree. The Divine Tree? It's a legendary tree that exists in the heart of our village. Hmm. Did you investigate the cause of this presence? Not really, no. And why not? Well, we're not really supposed to go near the tree, except for prayer. <sighs> and why is that? I don't know. It's just how things have always been. Really? That's strange. Weird. But can we go up to it? Everything seems normal here. We appear to have hit a dead end. Say, what is that on the ground? Just some funny looking berries. Ah, poisonous ones, I'd wager. Well, I'm sure not gonna eat them and find out. <laughs> What the fuck? Hmm. Um. Why do we seem to encounter nothing but odd people lately? You should talk, Vice. As if Grimoire Vice is capable of spouting such nonsense. <laughs> Hang on. I don't think it's done. It's the dirty of her Words? Does that mean it'll tell us what we want to know? That'd be nice. All right, here we go. Another tale. Sorry we're putting another boring episode, you guys. Black, pure darkness painted over everything. Words scattered here and there across the blackness. Kind words, difficult words, I'm... Um, Amorous words, all sparkling in the dark like jewels. The words were few now, but time was shorter. Grabbing the words in desperation, the tree turned to the sky. This is wrong, whispered the tree in the voice of the wind through the leaves. This is not how it's supposed to be. The plan has failed. Once long ago, the tree had remembered everything about the world. This was its task, its function, its purpose. It shivered with something approaching joy as it collected the memories of mankind. This was no accident. Emotions were as much as part of the tree as roots and bark. Memories collected like dew on the thick green leaves of the tree. Once they have formed a web that spanned the entire world, words collapse into sunlight before passing through the leaves and into the pool of memory. From the pool, the words join together to form colonies. The colonies united into whirlpools of light, and the light coalesced into stars. Each star was like a child of the tree, and it loved them all. Look at my, look at my memory. A child is here. Brought low by disease, he is far too young to suffer so. Thin beyond words, the boy's skin is a shade paler than the bleached sheets upon which he lies. His parent no longer visit him, for they cannot bear to watch him suffer. The doctors have long since surrendered his fate to the gods. The boy too has abandoned hope, strange emotions, weariness, and hatred swell within the dark with success of his young heart. He tries to reject the black terror that germinates his body, but no amount of effort or tears can drive the invader away. He has long ceased to resent his parents and doctors. Once he did, though, but now his pain is so great that there is little room in his heart to think of others. Only one person brings the boy comfort, a healthy young girl with tan skin and deep brown eyes. She is a beacon of brightness and light in the boy's world. He, her very presence is a comfort to him, but he is unable to look upon her face. Whenever they meet, the boy is filled with loathing for his own state. Soon this loathing eats away at what joy he receives from the girl's visit. Hmm. 
The girl will stop coming. You know this. His every waking moment is spent in fear of this day. He thinks that if he could talk to her, he could tell her if he could tell her feel hit her hit of his feelings. Sorry about that. This might not be so, but this conversation never happens. The girl disappears. The boy dies alone. The tree scoops up this memory and carefully stores within itself. Etch upon it is, it is a single word: envy. Look at my memory. There is a female warrior. Her greatest enemy is a beast with red eyes that she cannot fully comprehend. When she strikes it with her sword, it turns into a pillar of salt and dies. But what? When the white smoke clears, an enemy rises, and another, and another. The warrior knows that her struggle is folly, but the fighting, the, but fighting the unending stream of enemies fills her with a sense of joy and purpose. Somewhere deep in the warrior's drug-addled mind lies a vague memory of a daughter. Perhaps the child is just only in her head. The dying remnants of a powerful dream she does not know. Her friends and fellow warriors come and go. Some flee in terror, some are eaten. She began fight with 33 companions, and most are gone. Now, the warrior's body shudders, and she does not understand why at first. By the time she hears the fierce low sound, the arena is already enclosed in darkness. Looking up, the warrior sees a beast so large that it blots out the sky. She is laughing. She has been doing so for so long as she can remember. She covered in blood and dirt. The warrior laughs. She laughs and laughs until the town that contains her daughter collapses into a pile of dust. This memory has stayed her for a long time and etched in a single word: loss, envy, loss. Oh, that's weird. Look at my memory. A red dragon falls from the heavens. Ah, that memory has been lost. A shame it was a favorite of mine. After many centuries of existence, the tree saw that its carefully labeled memories were beginning to dwindle. Once seemingly infinite, the memories now seem ready to disappear forever. The tree did not feel sadness at this. Grief was an emotion beyond its comprehension. It did, however, have the distinct feeling that something was missing. The mountain of memory it had so carefully assembled had disappeared. The tree stretched its branches as far as it could, but new memories refused to flow. The pool of memories was a black, empty pit in a hollow place where life has once flourished. The tree had lost its purpose. The tree, there is nothing to be done but sift through the remaining memories. Lifting the ground under the, its, its branches, this is why the tree was pleased when the young man and his companion entered the room. Well, this place is gloomy as hell. The room we have entered is almost completely empty. All he, he could see were a few crystals scattered haphazardly on the ground. Picking up one of the crystals and peering into it, he saw a familiar sight. It was the forest of myth. Its villagers prisoners of their own dreams. I apologize, the tree thought. That is all that remains. As we stared at the jewel, bewildered, a voice suddenly called out the depths of his mind. The voice implored to him to listen. It was an order. Follow it. It was mandatory. Abruptly, the pair realized they must listen. They must listen. Look there. A small shadowy, shadowy, shadowy presence appeared from beneath the floor. It appears to be a shade. The shade grasps several jewels in his hand. Most jewels tumble out of his mouth like shards of broken teeth. Sights and sound, thinking of each one before it vanishes forever. So it was a shade behind all that, okay? The creature was abusing the memories, treating the precious objects like a collection of cheap playroom toys. This shade appears to be consuming the memories. There you go. The tree extended a branch towards us. Without a second thought, we brought his blade down on the shade, tearing its stomach wide. Jewel burst from the shade and poured across the chamber floor. There's the conviction, memory that I had lost, and satisfaction, and many others as well. This, well, yes, this is good. 
Tweet opened his mouth and attempted to speak, but no sound emerged. A millennium of silence and solitude has caused the tree to forget certain things, but rather than it be upset, it greeted the development with good cheer. Focusing all its power on the riddle of speech, the tree formed a kind of makeshift vocal cord and tried again. <clears throat> I, I implore. <laughs> I it spat out a glimmering green jewel. One more time, I implore you. There you are. What was the color of the lost envy? Oh shit, I think it was green, right? The girl with tan skin and deep brown eyes. I like to say brown, let's go with brown. Who cares? Right arm. Um, it spoke. This shade has intelligence and emotion. Who cares? He. We brush wise comment aside as we slice through the shade's right arm. The shade extended its remaining arm to us. I must touch him. I must make contact. The moment its finger brushed us against us, the tree felt a warm sensation began to burn. Something hot, coarse through its finger, up its arm, and out its entire body. So it was brown. There we go. It was emotion. More than an entity had felt in centuries. The tree cried out in surprise and joy. One thousand years alone. One thousand years of quiet contemplation. The tree felt like it was going to break apart. For a long century, the tree had been alone. Its heart sealed with heavy chains, but no more. New powerful emotion began to take hold, causing his heart to lighten. This was more than simple emotion that's been designed to feel. It was the beginnings of the soul. And the young man was the key. This was promised made long ago. This how was how this was how it was to be, be released. The tree's stomach began to throb in pain, a new and unpleasant sensation. Time is not right, I implore you. How many were lost by the warrior who fought the red eyed beast? It was 33. Her daughter in 33, I believe, yeah. Alright, little time is over. I'm gonna kill this stupid shit once for all. Something round and shiny fell from the open stomach and clattered to the floor. The key, cried the book. Secure the key. The man's sword slowed. Time began to lay around them, stretch slowings, time is essential, the next word must be heard. The words exploded, it became difficult to discern their meaning, the pool of memories began to crack as infinite blackness. Burr its way into the wall, wise, this is, this world is falling apart. How can a world of letters... I implore, most important thing, world. Yona, Yona, Yona. Oh crap. The light was complete. The memories disappeared. The tree identity began to dissolve. As the letters slowly faded, we were drawn back to the real world, and the tree was satisfied. Whew, I thought we were going to fail that mission. We got it. What in the... I never realized shades were capable of rational Wow, thoughts. it was a shade all along. I don't care if they can tap dance and play the fiddle. I just want to kill them without all this hassle. With the tree defeated... We no longer have to worry about being buried in its world of letters. Unless, of course, time itself begins to rewind. Alright, we got the memory tree fragment. So let's go... Back to Popola, I believe. I think, yeah. Oh, hold on. Maybe Popola's found some information about the Shadow Lord. Let's drop by the village. Alright. well. Let's see how much time we got. We got about two minutes left, so let's go ahead and run to it. And um, 
turn in that side quest. Hey, it's Kanye. You guys solved the mystery yet? No. We got nothing. Too bad. Hey, what's with those berries? What, these? We picked them up over by that huge tree. I thought maybe... Gimme. I'm starving. Um... Are you mad? Those berries are clearly poisonous. Even one such as you can't hope to... Damn, these are delicious. Give me more. Well, in that case, I suppose I should try one. Um... What just happened? Oh, I think Vice was right about those berries. Feels like somebody stabbed me in the gut. Hey, w what's wrong? Oh no, don't tell me you ate one of those berries. For the love of trees, those things are deadly. Quick, take this antidote before you perish. Okay. So Kanye has a very weird stomach. Wow. <sighs> She is a shade there. after all. Are you an idiot? Didn't you see the lumps? The unusual colors? Only a child would attempt to eat something like that. A child? Oh crap, I, I bet that kid ate one of these berries. Oh, from the previous um, uh, uh, side mission. Yes, yes. I remember. He, uh, the, the kids that, um, that mysteriously fell ill, he yes, must have ate those berries. And if the poison is this painful for you, I can only imagine what it would do to a small child. Hey, Kaine, did you take the antidote? Don't need it. God, those berries were amazing. The truly amazing thing is that your stomach is fouler than your taste in clothing. <laughs> if you had genitals, I would so chop them off right now. Oh, God. All right, so we got the antidote for the kid. We got to turn in the, the side mission for uh, defeating the, the shade at, at the bridge. And then we go to Popola. Ugh, this poison sucks. Still can't feel my arms and legs. I feel great. Man, you must have a cast iron stomach, Kaine. The hussy's internal organs are as filthy as her mouth. Why do you have to be <laughs> such a shithead all the time, book? <laughs> Oh god. Oh yeah, let's get out of here. We're not gonna mess with that. Just yet. Alright, let's get out of here. And once we turn in these side quests, um, we're gonna go ahead and call it a, an episode and then from there we're gonna be um, talking to Popola. All right, let's see, this guy, maybe. We killed the Shade at the bridge. My daughter is dead. She passed while you were gone. Aw, oh, damn. Here, take this money. I won't be needing it anymore. Damn, 30,000 gold? But I'm so sorry about your daughter. I really am. I need a... Oh yeah, this is my quest. Uh, the kid has to be somewhere around here. Um, who was it that needed an antidote? This this person, ma'am. I think your child ate a poison berry. If you give him this antidote, he should recover. Oh, thank you. I'll have him take it right away. Glad to hear it. And perhaps remind him not to eat foodstuffs he finds on the ground. Alright, some good gold. Alright. So, let's go ahead and call an episode from here, you guys. I'd like to say thank you, thank you for watching this. I really appreciate your time. I'll see you guys later, and GG's.